Welcome to Revival Time Hub. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. What is the goal of envy? I hope we're learning now. What is the goal of envy? The goal of envy, listen carefully, is to fight the frustration and discomfort that is experienced in the presence of another person's achievement. To fight the frustration and the discomfort that is experienced in the presence of another person's achievement as a way of healing from the feeling of inferiority. Envy is a way or the goal of envy is to fight the frustration and discomfort that is experienced in the presence of another person's achievement as a way of healing from the feeling of inferiority that it brings. Can you imagine that? That when you find yourself in envy, it is a way of trying to manage the frustration. Are we together? To manage the discomfort that is experienced in the presence of another. So an example, please let me have two people, two gentlemen preferably, two gentlemen, come. One stand here, thank you, by my left, the others, please stand by my right. All of you watch this. So let's call this one brother A, let's call this one brother B. Are you ready? Now all of you, please give this gentleman a round of applause. Make sure your attention is on him. Keep clapping. You can stand if you want to, but keep clapping. Hold on. Now look up, please. In this example, what do you think happens to this man? Because that applaud is happening in his presence and it does not seem to stop. Now you are standing on it. Are we together now? The natural response of this gentleman, except walked upon by the Spirit of God, is that regardless the reason, this man is going to be uncomfortable. This result is too consistent. It's a different thing if you just tap your hand, it's manageable. But when it becomes consistent, it's too loud, it's too consistent, there is a basis for contrast. Envy begins to build. Try it one more time. Here we go. A round of applause. You see that? Now, you do this on Sunday. Do it again on Monday. Do it again on Tuesday. Do it again in January, February, March. And I tell you, except God walks upon the heart of this, even if they are blood brothers, eventually... This cancer will catch up with this guy. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. It's a human reality that outside of the help of God can plague all men. Who is learning? So this gentleman now begins to get uncomfortable. Why? Because you see, results create a basis for contrast. Results kill excuses. When an individual begins to produce consistent results, it takes away the excuse factor. You cannot say it's because I'm in Kenya again. You cannot say it's because I came from a, a dysfunctional family again. In the presence of consistent results, your own excuses die. Is someone learning now? Thank you, gentlemen. Now you clap for this one. Come on. Give him a real, a real round of applause. Are we together? Thank you, my friend. All right, so here you go. Blessings to you. Are we learning so far? So the goal of envy is to fight the frustration. Do you know that whenever you find people communicating envy, they are dealing with something within themselves. There is a frustration are we together now? There is a discomfort that happens to them in the presence of consistent results from the life of others. How do they fight this? Number one, most people fight envy by downplaying the achievements and the perceptions 
that people have on others. So if this gentleman is to fight this one, his first assignment will be to downplay the achievement, to water down the achievement and make it look like it's not worth clapping. Is this why you are clapping? The moment you find yourself in that position, you've been infected by this virus of envy. The moment you find yourself downplaying, demeaning the achievements of others or the perception that people have towards another person's results, no matter how you argue it, it is caused by envy. Are we together? So someone can look at this incredible presentation by Pastor Julian and say, oh, well, I, I think it can be better. You see, once you, uh, it, 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 the moment you begin to hear those things, I tell you, it is produced. You see, envy can use anything, a lie or the truth. The goal is not to sell you truth. The goal is to use that to water you down. It's, it's like a system that tries to equalize. Don't say tell them. It's a surgery. God is working on everyone. <laughs> Reverend Julian, you invited me to Kenya again. I hope this is a good start. <laughs> Downplaying the achievements of others, the character of envy. Downplaying the perception that people have on account of another person's result. So when someone says, this great man of God from Switzerland, he's doing a great work. Oh, have you been there? Do you know him? Once you begin to hear those things, an attack on people's results, why clap? Beware of those who do not clap. When God is lifting you, beware of those who have a problem clapping when God is announcing you. Do you have to honor the Father and the Lord? What is wrong? Does it affect you? You see, when people take your success too personal, you see, they don't have to be bad people. I hope I'm not describing you. But if I am, welcome to Rema Feast. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Please sit down. Let me walk this for a few minutes. So envy walks by number one, attempting to downplay the achievements of others, attempting to downplay the perception that people have over another person's result. It is the character of envy. Number two, how does envy operate? By wishing for the fall or the destruction of the person experiencing the results. So envy goes further to wish. It becomes a secret desire. Can something happen to Reverend Julian that just makes it look like he's not that exceptional? Can something happen to this pastor? Can something happen to this person? You see that now? Do you know this was a situation with the Jesus and the scribes and the Pharisees? They so wanted him to die. They wanted him to die. To a point that they were willing to release an armed robber. Let's honor our father. I may not know him, but please give him the honor that he deserves. May God bless you, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Now, please, let me have your attention. What kind of anger over Jesus makes a people want to release back an armed robber? Is a version of what we would call a terrorist. They were willing to make do with Barabbas again. They said, just let Barabbas come down. Let him continue to kill our children. But for God's sake, let this man die. Get him out of the way. Don't chain him. Don't put him in prison. Kill him. Envy for you. Envy so desires the downfall of others as a therapy, as a way to heal. 
when you hear that something happened she just lost her child you you almost want to hide the joy you first feel the joy then you feel the pain you listen to this i will tell you the reason why the church does not seem to advance because if we do not conquer envy we will keep killing the visions of one another using scriptural excuses killing the visions of one another rejoicing hugging in the open and then stabbing in the secret are we together we cannot attain unity as a people we cannot advance as a people if we do not deal with envy now please look at me for most people their journey towards receiving this cancer of envy starts from childhood it doesn't matter if you're a preacher let me do psychology for two minutes forgive me most people do not know that there is a psychological explanation to envy envy is easily around a life that has suffered deprivation when you have been deprived of opportunity when you have been deprived of things access it is the natural response you will hate any other person who is in that vantage position outside of you can can you believe that this can happen between a husband and a wife you will think marriage will solve the problem no sir it can happen between siblings it can happen between preachers or do i say this is what is happening among many people are we together now so when you come from a background where you have been deprived now just for your information i know that most of you will know this the highest psychological need of any man whether a pastor whether a businessman the highest psychological need of any man listen carefully is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued and the need to feel appreciated or celebrated you may want to write that down that the highest psychological need of every man including you the highest psychological need of every man any man at all is the need to feel loved say loved come on shout it kenya say loved number two the need to feel valued and then the need to feel appreciated or celebrated the need to feel loved the need to feel valued the need to feel celebrated the highest psychological need of any man is not money why do you want the money as a means of achieving this why do you rejoice because you bought a better metal than another metal you call it a car why do you rejoice over metals do you love metals that much no sir now i'm not downplaying that why do you rejoice over sand that you constructed more beautiful than another is it really the house is it really the material no it is your pursuit to achieving this psychological need the need to feel loved the need to feel valued and the need to feel appreciated and look at me you become an enemy to anybody when you frustrate their achieving this psychological need you become an enemy to anyone at all if they learn whether by experience or by rumor or by instinct that you are standing the way of their feeling loved they are feeling valued or they are feeling appreciated you become their enemy immediately this is true for pastors with members or pastors among pastors this is true for business people are we together now the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued the need to feel appreciated now most believers do not know that when you come into Christ the work of renewal does not happen instantaneously and so we think because we are born again automatically all of these fleshly tendencies leave so you are surprised that envy can cohabit with the anointing you can be anointed you can be great you can be a businessman you can be vibrant spiritually and yet find this cancer still growing 
Medical science has taught us that it's possible for a baby to be growing and there's a fibroid there growing too. And both of them will compete to grow. Am I right on that? That the old man can be growing and the new man can be growing there too. Paul did not hide his frustration in Romans chapter 8. He said, the things that I desire to do, I do not find myself doing them. Even as an apostle, the things that I do not want to do, I find myself doing them. He says, with my spirit, I serve the Lord, but in my flesh, I see another law walking in my members. He was so frustrated. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Paul for you. Paul did not hide his frustrations. He said, listen, although you consider me to be an apostle, there is still a war that happens within my members. And God is dealing with one of such. You will be surprised that when you get rid of envy, you will taste of true freedom. The bondage that envy brings, I'm not sure many of the, its victims are aware of the extent of bondage they're in living in envy and i'm praying for someone already in the name of jesus this spirit of envy this cancer of envy that has that has robbed preachers has robbed businessmen of their prophetic destiny in this conference here at rima feast 2024 let it die permanently shout a believers amen let it die permanently in the name of jesus christ you give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always. Listen and write. Envy is not always about wanting to be the best. It is most times wanting to be the only. Envy. It's not always about wanting to be the best. It is about wanting to be the only. One time the disciples of Jesus, whilst he was mentoring them, they did not even know that envy was growing in their own hearts. They heard that the mother of James and John, remember the story? That she came to negotiate a position for them in advance. And she used that privilege as a mother to say, Jesus... When you are done with Caesar, when you are done with Herod, when you are done with all of this, please grant my sons an opportunity to sit at your left and your right. The Bible says when the other disciples heard it, you could imagine the anger in the camp. So you think we're here for nothing? I can imagine Peter saying, you think I left fishing for nothing? I wasn't doing bad after all. They all had their various agenda. They hid it and kept quiet. You see, envy can be quiet for many years. You will think you are free till someone comes with a result that is notable, that is consistent, and there it comes again. Are we learning? Envy is not always about wanting to be the best. It is many times about wanting to be the only. And with all due respect, this is not a pastor's conference, but let me charge co-laborers in the gospel. This is one area that every preacher must fight in righteousness. It will not go by default, no matter how anointed you are. You have to become comfortable knowing that you are not the only one God called. I'm going to say it again. You have to become comfortable knowing that you are not the only one God called. I know your call was so spectacular, but it was not only you he called. The spirit of envy never finds comfort, even if the whole body is doing well. It prides in marching on others until you stand alone. Not knowing that in the kingdom, being alone is dangerous. Are we together now? Being alone is dangerous. The Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. He was not just speaking in terms of marriage. He's saying it's a risk when you are alone. In business, in a sector, when you are alone, that, that, that sharing together that shields you. 
it is a reason why every man of God must seek to replicate himself. Your safety is in reproducing yourself. When you are alone, you become an endangered species. When the devil strikes you, a whole generation can perish because of the pride of one person. So he told Moses, he said, Moses, you are about to die. Pour your spirit upon others. Find rest so that they can ease this labor for you. Even Jesus himself replicated himself and asked the people, he said they should continue doing that. Envy does not find fulfillment in being the best or the greatest. It goes further to want to be alone. You must be comfortable knowing that no matter how spectacular your calling, your election, your assignment is, that you are not alone. One time, the disciples heard that there were other people casting out demons. Is it in your Bible? They were not part of the camp. And they said, Jesus, we need to do something about this. Our relevance is being threatened here. I thought we were the only ones. How could there be someone who does not honor Jesus? And yet I'm hearing that some things, can we call down fire? Let's end this in a hurry. And Jesus looked at them and said, the fact that you can think like this, you are not, I mean, who should be sad if you are with Jesus? That to me seems to be the highest honor everyone can have. That Jesus called you to be with him. And even in the presence of Jesus, people were still not comfortable. Most times people say, Jesus, just give me Jesus and I'm fine. But now you have him and you are still not fine. Are we learning? The disciples were with Jesus. Can you imagine? The word incarnate. And they heard that some fellows were trying to heal and all of that. They would have looked on them with compassion and said, My God, I wish Jesus would call these people, even if they are using whatever power. They said, Let's call down fire so that we end this. We have to be the ones doing this alone. Every time you think you are the only one doing what you are doing, you are already under the attack of delusion. Ah, there are many other sons. There are many other champions. There are many other warriors. Are we together? Do not make the mistake of Elijah. Elijah said, I am the only one. Said, ah, 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 ah. You are a great prophet, but here you are missing it. Run away from that feeling that makes you believe you are the only one God is using. No, no matter how spectacular. Reverend Julian, you invited me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, don't worry, I'll, I'll end by giving you the cure. So don't, don't, um, I'm a good doctor. There's a cure. There's both a vaccine and a treatment. Are we together now? But now, I hope you're not just laughing. We're dealing with serious issues here. That a man can be anointed a man can be wealthy. Herod heard. Look up please. Herod heard that a king was born somewhere. He said, find that king. I want to kill that baby. That the baby will not even see the light of day. Question. I mean, isn't it embarrassing to come to the palace and meet the king worried? And he said, king, what was the issue? I mean, is there war brewing up somewhere? And he says, a little child. I heard that there's prophecy over that little child and I'm concerned about my place. Look at the age gap. The age gap is enough comfort to know that most likely by the time this child becomes an adult, he will be dead. And yet envy can make an intelligent person be that dull to reduce yourself and pursue mundane things. A king threatened by a baby who is not even aware he's there. Is someone learning? I wish I would tell you that this does not exist among preachers, but it does. I wish I would tell you that this does not exist among business people, but it does. I wish I would tell you that this does not exist among brethren in church, it does. So here comes a powerful testimony. And while others are crying, someone is in anger. So the triplets finally came. 
And you are saying, how bedeviled can you be that while others are crying and say, we rejoice for this woman, someone else, I can tell you it's a painful thing, but not everybody claps when you are lifted. Hmm. There are people, your arrival brings an end to their dispensation. They will fight it. John the Baptist, who called Jesus to ministry and ordained him, Jesus himself submitted to John and the Bible acknowledged that John was the greatest of the prophets. Let me show you what envy can do. It can spill over to offense of all sorts. When John was done, he said it beautifully so that I must decrease that he will increase. John would have left in honor. I do not believe he would have ended the way he ended. But in anger, envy, now Jesus, some of his disciples had left and they had gone to Jesus, remember? And John had so deteriorated, he got to a point where he began to discuss other issues and he found himself in prison. Watch this. John sent his disciples to go to the same Jesus he ordained and said, are you the Messiah? Come on, John. Look what envy degenerated to offense. Are you the Messiah? John, who said, behold the lamb. Of God, John, who baptized Jesus, is now asking, are you the Messiah? Even the scribes and the Pharisees had come to terms with the fact that he was the Messiah. Nicodemus came by night and said, we know that thou art a preacher sent from God. Don't mind what we do in the day, we already know. And here is John saying, are you the Messiah? Or should we expect another? The language of envy, the language of offense. Watch Jesus. Jesus did not answer. He healed the sick and did all this. He said, go back. Tell John what you have seen. And then he said, blessed is he who is not offended in me. That's my answer to John. Go back and tell John, offense is about to destroy you. It's a prayer that I've prayed for myself. It's a prayer that I've prayed for everyone I love. That you will shield yourself by revelation from this cancer of envy. It can turn a good man of God to look like a beast. It can turn a good businessman to look. It brings, it's a depleter of anything. Add envy to anything and it reduces you to ashes. There are people in Kenya, this is their singular problem. There are people in Nigeria. There are people in South Africa. There are people all over Africa. They literally cannot sleep because the news of what God is doing in the life of others is such a torture to them. They lose sleep. They live on drugs. You mean this man has purchased this property again? Ah, what do we do? Someone killed. Can't there be a scandal around this life? Something that comforts me that this person is not that spectacular. They look forward to a news. Is there something? Can, can you find something? The character of envy. This businessman cannot be that spectacular. No, I'm sure he's doing something. This man of God cannot be that spectacular. I'm sure there's something. And because they are humans, you will find an I that was not dotted eventually or a T that was not crossed. Now, envy capitalizes on anything. And good news for envy when it does find something. And it will find because you are dealing with the world of men. So you find people overflogging simple matters is because envy is what is flogging it. Did you hear what I said? Overflogging simple matters. So the secretary forgot the file. Truly, he forgot the file. But why are you still discussing the issue after one month? Ah, it's not the issue of file. You just found the file issue as a scapegoat to help you vent out envy. Are we together now? Yes. Okay, the man of God quoted Genesis instead of John. Is that the reason? Did it alter your receiving Jesus? Did it alter salvation? Is it really the scripture? No, sir. Oh, Reverend Julian put a wrong account number. He missed it by one. Oh, okay, so you correct it. No, something must. I mean, how could he miss that one? Is it really the account number? 
Envy hides in anything, especially truth. Because truth can also be used by evil. The Bible says Judas, even though this was not a case of envy, Judas saw a woman break her alabaster box in front of Jesus and he rode through the wings of compassion to say, no, 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 no. This is a waste. That was greed speaking. But he spoke through empathy. He said, um, the money would have been gathered. Then he remembered and given to the poor. And the Bible says, no, it's not because he loved the poor. It's because he was a thief. So a thief can speak as a philanthropist and yet he's a thief. An envious person can speak as a counselor yet it is not counseling. He's not interested in your growth. He's venting out something. Are we together? Every time you find envy, it overflows simple issues. The goal is not correction. The goal is to reveal flaws. The goal of envy is to reveal flaws. And the point is to try to downplay, to demean anything that looks spectacular so that it will find rest. I'm saying this to us because subconsciously, Many of us have found ourselves, I know some of you are laughing, but I'm honestly describing you in the name of honesty. You know it's just that I didn't put your name in this story. But I'm really talking about you. Now, I, don't feel bad. This is Rima face. I came in the spirit of love. Mm. Are we together? They hated him because of his father's love. They hated him because of his dream. They hated him because of his coat. Three things that will make men hate you. The love of your father. Hmm. No, you are not the only one who God loves. Unfortunately, I'm not aware of what is happening between you and him. But I can only talk for myself. They hated him because of his father's love. They hated him because of his dream. The vision he was carrying. And yet the Bible says all men have the ability to see visions and to dream dreams. And they hated him because a coat was given to him. You can't be a preacher and a businessman, a counselor and a diplomat is too much for one person. A coat of many colors. If you have one color, it's all right. But many colors is too spectacular. How do you see many colors and deny it? I'm looking at lovely women wearing all kinds of things. Many colors, you know. And you see there's red, there's all kinds of things like the rainbow all there. Many colors. So are you a man of God or you're a businessman? How do you excel in every area? It's not my fault. My father gave me a coat. Many colors. And you can be hated for that. I hear you're a counselor. I hear you're a businessman. I hear you're a diplomat. I hear, and you're excelling in all areas. Juggling them with efficiency. The Bible says, whatsoever he doeth prospers who is God speaking to now we're going to pray for one minute and then I will show you the biblical cure to envy God is going to be healing us here are you ready lift your voice and pray in one minute walk upon my heart walk upon my heart someone pray a man of God pray someone desperate for growth pray walk upon my heart let the spirit of envy give way some of you have recognized it in all honesty. You have seen that it's there. It's been there for years. It's time to get it out of your life. It's time to step into a greater level of spiritual efficiency. Ah, 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 ah. Are you praying? Walk upon my heart. Ah. 